Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my new video. So a lot has happened over the past day or so. I was thinking of taking a break today, but looks like I'm not gonna because there's so much news and important stuff that's happening around the world. It really is difficult to take any time off whatsoever. I also want to apologize for my previous video. The um, editing was a bit messed up. Um, I was experimenting with a new editing software and it completely messed up the edit. And uh, you know what? I should have um, went through the video and checked it again. I didn't do that. I assumed everything was fine. Um, my previous software got deleted uh, because I had to change my laptop. And um, yeah, everything got messed up. So apologize for that. Um, I've installed my previous software in this new laptop. So hopefully I shouldn't have this issue going forward. So before I talk about Crimea um, and obviously the Ukrainian attack on Crimea, and um, I'm also going to be talking about Britain's involvement in the Nord Stream 2 attacks as well. And some interesting thing Berlusconi from Italy has been saying as well. So I'll go into that. But before I do, I want to kind of talk about South Korea. Uh, there's been a lot of tragic stuff that's happening today. Um, obviously, you heard about the Halloween incident where 150 people or so got killed in South Korea. In this little alleyway you can see in this picture where where there was thousands of people trying to get through and um, you know people got crushed and people got killed there was also a bridge in india which um fell and that killed apparently hundreds of people as well so um so cuz commiserations to the families who have been killed so I want to follow this article in South Korea only because I, I used to also live in South Korea for a short period of time. And this is one of the areas I used to live in. And the area is called Itaewon. And a lot of you who don't know where Itaewon is, it's actually an area in Seoul. It used to be near um, a U.S. military base called Yongsan. Yongsan military base used to be based there, but not anymore because there was a lot of when I was when I was living in South Korea at the time, uh, a young girl got raped and murdered by a U.S. serviceman, and there was a huge amount of demonstrations um, happening around Itaewon area, and every day I used to see demonstrators used to like campaign for US troops to be you know pushed out of, of, of the country so what they've done since then I think by 2018 they moved most of the facilities to southern part of Seoul where it's not very populated and um, they moved most of the soldiers and the families uh, away from uh, Yongsan and you can you can see here in the Wikipedia page it gives you kind of brief um, history of that um, military base, and there there are still important um, offices still left. Um, they're not all gone, by the way, but most of it it's gone. And I'm saying this because I used to live there, and Itaewon used to be quite a famous area in South Korea. This is where all of the American style bars and clubs were, and a lot of US servicemen used to kind of go there for drinks. And you will see a lot of South Korean girls who want to pick up foreigners or they want to pick, you know, they want to basically date some foreign men or American men. They, these South Korean girls would go to Itaewon and, and, um, you know, meet these, um, GI Joes. And um, it used to happen regularly. And Itaewon is quite um, a very lively area, lots of bars, lots of clubs. And um, and yeah, I used to live there. It was quite fun, to be honest. I, I had a lot of fun living there, um, met a lot of friends. Um, I used to know quite a few uh, American soldiers at the time. Uh, I've lost contact with them because this was a long time ago. This was over 10 years ago. 
Um, so yeah, I've lost contact with most of them. But the whole point is, this area, you see this little corridor, I used to walk up and down this little alleyway all the time. And people that know me, I love um, kind of walking around. Um, I, I love kind of exploring new parts of the city. And this used to be uh, this used to be an area that I, I know very well. Um, I used to walk around in. So when I saw this, I was pretty shocked. I was pretty shocked to see what had happened. So let's look at the main part of the story now. So there are reports that Ukraine has attacked Sebastopol in the Crimean port in Russia. And um, this has caused some damage. I'm not exactly sure how much damage at this point. Um, Russia has not released the full details. And it has caused enough damage for Russia to take steps and retaliate. Uh, one of the ways they are retaliating is they are cutting the Ukraine grain deal. And obviously, there are people in the White House, I'm talking about Biden, who has actually taken time off his busy schedule and said, Russia suspending grain deal purely outrageous, says Joe Biden. So the fact that Joe Biden is saying this, it usually means that the West is not happy and it's going to affect them in some way or other. I love how the Financial Times says this, Russian exit from Ukraine grain deal, catastrophic for poor nations. So let me tell you something. This is not going to be catastrophic for poor nations. Russia will find a way to give these grains to these poor nations in some way or other, whether they have to go along the rail route or land route or a completely different sea route, they will find a way. The way that the whole West, all of these papers have actually absolutely blown up, absolutely blown up, every single paper, they're saying, oh, this grain deal, grain deal, blah, 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 food shortages, the poor nations will suffer. And I'm looking at all of these news articles like on The Sun and CNN and everyone's saying, oh, this is going to cause global famine and stuff like that. They don't really care about the global south. When have they started caring about the global south? I'll tell you who's real people who are going to be affected are the West. Because there is no way Russia is going to give this grain to the Western countries. And they said that before. They said that way before this grain deal was agreed, months before. They, and, and in fact, they said that if you want to buy grain from us, you're going to have to pay us in rubles. And this is, this is going to happen in the West. It's not going to happen in the global South. Obviously, you know, Russia will find a way to deliver those grains to these poor nations. And I think they will give them, give them a discount and, you know, the poor nations will get the grain. It's the Western nations are not going to be able to get the grain. And I'll tell you who else is going to be affected. Ukraine. Because Ukraine is not going to be able to make money by selling you know, grain to the rest of the world. They're not going to be able to deliver this to the rest of the world because Russia you know, has said that they, they have pulled out of this grain deal, which means they are not going to secure a safe passage for grain to be um, going through these disastrous waters. So first of all, what did you expect Russia to do? You know, if you attack a Russian port, Sevastopol, with all of these drones, flying drones and sea drones, what what did the hell? What the hell do you want the Russians to do? Carry on with the grain deal in these dangerous waters? No way. No country in the world would do that. If this happened in British waters, they would close all the ports. You know, it's absolutely crazy how these Westerners think. Absolutely crazy. It's almost like a very selfish, evil way of thinking. We don't care about your security. We don't care about your ships. We don't care about your ports being blown up. We just want that grain. 
Give it to us now because we demand it. We want it now. They don't care about these poor nations. You know, this is only going to be affecting the Western nations because do you know why? Because of this, inflation is now going to rise. Food prices are going to rise. There's going to be food shortages in the West. I know in UK there is. And this is what they're afraid of. They don't, they don't care about the poor nations. They just care about caring about themselves. All they want is inflation to be down and for them to eat. They don't care if, if the global south you know, kills itself due to hunger. They don't care about that. They've never cared about the global south. It just shows double standards. You've got to read between the lines to see exactly what they are saying. The fact that the West is all blowing up and all, all like all the papers are covering it, it shows how worried they are about the inflation rising, the cost of food rising, food shortages. It just shows how worried they are about their own self, not the global self. And the fact that Joe Biden has come out and said outrageous. You know, it, this means that whatever Russia is doing is right. If the Joe Biden said it's outrageous, that's right, you're doing the right thing. So Russia says that Canadian-made parts in the drones are targeting ships because they managed to capture a couple of drones that have already taken it apart and they have found Canadian-made parts in the drones. So I'm not exactly sure what Russia, what action Russia would take. Um, they'll they will obviously um, hit Ukraine harder. Um, they will hit you know Kiev even harder. And that part of the world right now is is going to be very very cold, especially you know Ukraine, Kiev. And especially those people in city, living in those cities, they're going to be out of power. They won't be able to heat their homes. So the West is worried more about their own selves than worrying about Ukrainians. You know, it would make sense to work out a peace deal now, sooner rather than later, because a lot of people in Ukraine are going to die because of the, you know, because of the cold over there. It's very, very cold at this time of year. It's going to be a real tough next few months in Ukraine, and I'll tell you that now. So there's a funny story how Berlusconi has, um, was talking, and somebody managed to record what he was really saying about the West and how the West provoked Russia into this war. And somebody recorded recorded it and they put it out in public. And it's funny how some of these leaders privately, you know, speak common sense, but publicly they are towing a line, they are towing the narrative. So let's go through what Berlusconi had said, shall we? So he says here, he accused the Ukraine president of provoking the Russian invasion in a leaked recording. So what he was saying is Zelensky did not implement the uh, Minsk agreements. He purposely attacked Donetsk areas. He did not listen to any warnings. And the West was provoking um, Russia as well, um, you know, forcing Ukraine to join NATO. and. And all sorts of stuff that we've been all talking about in our channels and the Duran and many other channels that you guys follow. Everything, like, in terms of common sense, we were talking about for months. And Berlusconi was, you know, following the line. He was following the narrative of the West, giving sanctions and stuff. But you can see privately, they all think the way we do. Publicly, their hands are tied behind their backs. And it just goes to show, I just wish some of, some of these leaders would show a bit of courage and stand up and say this publicly, not privately. 
you know, imagine the kind of support you would get and the respect you would get as a leader if you came out and spoke the truth. If one Western leader comes up now and speaks the truth, imagine the support he would get. Yeah, obviously he'll probably get blasted by the media. The deep, you know, the deep state will probably come down hard on him. The US will probably want regime change. Yeah, you'll get all of those problems. But who cares? At least, you know, you come out, you showed courage, you showed strength. And the people will love you for it. People will follow you. People will love you. And if, the, if you've got the people's respect, there is no way, nobody can do to get you out of power. Nobody can get you out of power if, if the people love you. Look at Putin. Look at President Xi. You know, 98% approval rating for President Xi. And... You know, everyone loves Putin in, in Russia. Well, most people do anyway. There is no way of regime change in any of those two countries. So who cares what the West thinks? You know, I just wish some of these Western leaders would just stand up and just speak the truth for once. Berlusconi, yeah, he spoke the truth, but it's in private. You know, I wish he could just come out and say it in public as well. He said, yes, I meant what I said in private. These are the reasons. And everything that we've been talking about, he's been saying privately. So I can imagine most European leaders think like that, but, you know, privately, they think like that, but publicly, I know, they, they all follow the same line, they all follow the same hymn sheet. Ridiculous. So Russia has said that the US Navy has blown up Nord Stream. And London denies involvement. From what I can say is, I wouldn't be surprised, guys. I would not be surprised. UK does have the technology to do this. And UK does have um, the motivation to do it. Um, they have the means to do it. I'm also hearing stories how the Russians have basically hacked List Truss's phone when List Truss was the uh, Prime Minister at the time. And just a minute after the explosion, she messaged Blinken, it's done, apparently. And this is a huge deal. And you have to understand, UK is probably less dependent on Russian oil compared to Germany and other European countries. Because we have our own northern, you know, fields with oil and gas, and we have been pretty much independent. And even though we are independent, the gas companies in UK are completely shafting us, absolutely shafting us. They are basically taking all of that gas, taking all of that oil, and selling it abroad, and increasing the prices of it. And we get a really bad deal. We end up with paying really high, ridiculous gas prices on oil prices because all of these oil companies that own um, these gas and oil reserves, they're just out there to make a profit. They're not really looking at benefiting the UK people in any possible way. And if you're a gas and oil company um, in Great Britain, you are laughing because government can't touch you. You know, you are basically making so much profit. The government doesn't even give a windfall tax against you. You know, you are laughing. The government just won't come anywhere near you. It's absolutely ridiculous. And if you compare it to France, for example, where they've nationalized it, you know, the people in France, their gas and electricity bills is so much more smaller compared to UK. In UK, we're just paying a high cost of living just to feed these fat cats in these oil companies and these bankers as well. Check this article out. Shell profits more than double to huge 8 billion as Brits struggle against sky high bills. And their profits have gone to 8 billion between July and September. In three months, 
while the rest of the people in UK can't afford to pay their electricity bills or gas bills. These companies are laughing, laughing all the way to the bank. Because you know how they're making money. They are selling gas and oil abroad for a really expensive price. And they're leaving the British short change. You know, there's hardly anything left for us anymore. And this is why we have to pay these high prices while these companies are just making a huge profit selling it abroad. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So going back to this story, I, would, I really wouldn't be surprised. I mean, you have to look at British actions over the years, what they've been doing. You know, they've been sailing their ships in the South China Sea, through the Taiwanese Strait. They've been sailing their ships next to Crimea. You know, they've been really antagonistic towards Russia, very antagonistic towards um, China. Did you watch films like James Bond? I mean, the latest James Bond film where you have a British ship firing missiles at a Russian island, Russian-owned island, like it's nothing. They're allowed to do, do whatever they want. They can fire missiles into a Russian island without any, any sort of repercussions or consequences. I believe the film was called No Time to Die. If you have a chance, watch it. It's good because James Bond finally dies in it. But going back to this story, I really wouldn't be surprised if the British did it. Um, the British have no love for the Europeans. They don't really care if Europe sinks because they are out of Europe. You know, you know, it's Brexit basically. And as far as Britain's concerned, they are out of Europe. Brexit's happened. And they don't give a toss whatever happens to Europe. They don't care if Europe deindustrializes or people freeze or, you know, Europe, get, Europe collapses. If Europe collapses, the British will be happy. The British people who have voted for Brexit, who wanted Brexit, they will be saying, see, see, Brexit was, we were right, we were right all along. See, we, need to, we needed to get out there when we had the chance. Now look at Europe. They've crashed, they've burnt. We made the right decision. Good, well done, well done. That's what they will do. So it is exactly in British interest to blow up this pipeline. Exactly. And now that I think of it, I don't think anybody else would do it except the British because British have the most to gain from this. Most to gain because of the Brexit issue. They do not want to sink while you know, Europeans, if they ever make a deal with Russia again, if they open up the Nord Stream 2 pipeline again, and then Europe suddenly, you know, has a boom, cheap energy and German industry starts, you know, going up again. This is going to be bad news for Britain. Britain's going to be left behind. So it makes perfect sense for Britain to blow up this pipeline allow Germany to deindustrialize, allow Europe to pretty much collapse. And that way, Britain takes down Europe with it. Makes perfect sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think it was the British, to be honest. But can the Russians prove it? I'm not sure if they can. I'm not sure if they can. But, you know, all... Evidence does point to UK now. I, I think it's definitely the UK. I know people will say, oh, it's probably United States and stuff. But thinking about it, I think it's probably most, most likely UK guys. And obviously the evidence is not there, but I'm sure the truth will come out sooner or later in the next few years. Somebody, one of the whistleblowers will spill the beans and you'll see the truth come out. But then it'll be too late. Finally, a bit of good news. Lula, the far leftist government, has triumphed over Bolsonaro. And 
Bolsonaro, I've never been a fan of, and I don't know much about Brazilian politics, so I'm going to keep this very short. But from what I can see, Lula seems to be the right choice. Uh, Bolsonaro, with his policies, especially during COVID, uh, because of him, most of the, you know, most of the Amazon rainforest seems to have been disappearing under his leadership. But this seems to be a growing trend in South America where a lot of countries are starting to move left. Um, obviously, Colombia moved left as well very recently. And now Brazil are following. And a lot of countries who are fed up of U.S. Imper imperialism fed up of being puppets of the United States are now starting to get their own sovereignty back. So it's really good news. I think Lula will do a much better job for Bolsonaro. Obviously, time will tell. But I really wish the people of Brazil uh, best of luck. And I really hope this works out for you. So that's all I have for today, guys. Thanks for listening. Obviously, a lot of news happening around the world. They come thick and fast. Um, don't forget, you can support me on Patreon and Locals. Uh, I would need your help. Um, I am leaving my job in a few more months. Um, so I'm not, I haven't decided whether I'm going to do this full time or whether I'll have to find one, another job or maybe a couple of jobs. So I haven't decided yet. I'd love to do this full time for you guys. Uh, but obviously, I, I would need more support. I've got about 32 local people. Um, I need around the 50 figure um, if I'm going to do this full time. So not many, just 18 of you remaining. So if you can help support the channel, you'll be very much appreciated. Obviously, you've seen some of the high caliber guests I'm bringing on board. Um, there's a lot of relationships I'm building. Um, you've recently, we've had the new Atlas. We've had Alex from the UK Column. Uh, we've also had a chat with the Duran. Uh, many, many great guests. Antonio as well. Um, so there's more and more great guests coming. We're still a young channel. We are growing. Uh, we are growing fast. Uh, but you'll need, we need your support to take it to the next level. So I really appreciate everything you guys have been doing. And the ones who cannot support the channel, just carry on doing what you're doing. Like, share, subscribe. You know, whatever you do to help uh, the algorithm is very much supported. Uh, make sure you do your comments as well. Join the live when this video goes live. Make sure you watch it straight from beginning to the end. Um, all of those small things help out with the algorithm. So really, really appreciate you guys doing that. So that's all I wanted to say, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot.